I'm Hayley and welcome to the Strangerthon vlog. So this readathon in particular is run by a lovely group of ladies who talk about books and stuff on both YouTube and Instagram. I've just kind of found out about this readathon randomly and thought I would have a little look-see. Collect their collective Instagram page is uh, Stacks of Strange. So first off we'll start with the prompts. So we have a different format. We have LGBTQIA plus rep, folklore and mythology base, odd setting and non-human POV. I just started House of Hades is what I'm using for mythology because that one deals with Greek and Roman mythology. So now so far I have two audiobooks, one physical and um, hopefully I'll get two ebooks or comics. That is the game plan. Right now while I'm bullet journaling and whatnot, I'm going to be listening to my audiobook for House of Hades. I'm going to start the readathon now. We need some chaos. Thought you'd never ask. She started catcalling at the female demons. Your makeup is smeared. So it's later on in the day. The sun's starting to go down. I wanted to talk about the first book that I've now completed, which is... <sighs> The Heroes of Olympus fourth book, House of Hades, but I listened to the audiobook instead. This book is the fourth book of Heroes of Olympus series. It's following a large group of friends, so <laughs> it does have Percy and Annabeth in it, as well as some of the new people that we've accumulated at the beginning of the series. It's like a lot of other Percy Jackson books, and I personally enjoyed it a lot, and it's like, I just really enjoyed the world in this series that McCrowd and creates and develops all upon. It's so murky and gross outside today. I'm gonna do my makeup while I talk to you. I ended up eating my pizza, and instead of watching a movie, I just listened to another audiobook. Um, I listened to Wayward Sun by Rainbow Rowell, and that's for the LGBT prompt. Yeah, I ended up finishing that last night. <laughs> but yeah, that's the second book to carry on. When I tell you I enjoyed it a lot, I mean it. It's like a good in-between of Harry Potter and Percy Jackson, I find. It's got that kind of adventure, like a little bit road trip vibes. In the first book they have, like the chosen one trope. But I think the second book, it kind of like, it's like the aftermath of that. I personally really enjoyed getting a closer look at how vampires work in this world. But when I tell you that book ended on a cliffhanger, I was pissed. I feel like every shot's gonna be unflattering on unflattering. So I just got out of the bar during that time. I read the Captain America and Bucky storyline. Most of that book, except for the last issue, is all from Bucky's perspective and he's the only human. I'm getting introduced to so many like different um, creatures that are going to be explained further on in their own like solo series or like later on in the comics. So I'm very intrigued and very interested in how things are going to be like explained and dived in th further. I read the Captain America and Bucky issues 620 to issue 624 and then I also am counting the Captain America and more and that's uh, 635.1 which Captain America and Bucky but then it's like a branch off from that so while Bucky is off doing his assassin situation. One thing that I think is really strange that they've like dived into is Bucky goes on a mission. They really pulled they're in a concentration camp and like to the point where like Bucky is fighting with someone and he falls into a pit and I'm like dude I did not need to see that. I, we didn't need that. I understand that they were trying to go for like the Bucky sympathetic nature and how he feels so passionate about helping people and being a hero in order to sort of juxtapose how evil he, evil he gets or how much he's being brainwashed later on. But like I just, we already knew that <laughs> before. Like I didn't need to see it in order to, you know, and it, it definitely like was it, it felt unnecessary. I'm glad it was only discussed in one particular like issue. I am now going to eat my dinner. <laughs> Hello. 
I swear I'm always like talking to you from my bed or from my desk because those are the two places that I jump between throughout my day. <laughs> Finally bringing the camera out to talk to you because I've forgotten about it. So the readathon ends like tomorrow. Last night I ended up honing in on one of the read-ins, read-alongs, read whatever the hell you want to call it. The time difference is hard for me to participate in that way. So I usually end up having to skip that prompt. But last night, because I was already awake and then I got a notification for it and I was like, oh, may as well. And I was already reading the X-Men Magneto Testament, issue one to five. I don't really feel comfortable having this particular comic in the readathon at all. Having anything to do with the Holocaust being in a readathon titled The Strangerthon. Like, I just... Do you understand what I mean? I just think it's really insensitive. Previously, I made that comment about um, how I didn't need to see the concentration camp in Captain America and Bucky, like those particular issues, or one in particular that like really stood out to me. I was like, I did not need to see inside that concentration camp. Now I understand why they've put it in. Um, with Captain America and Bucky, I felt like he didn't really do anything, but in this, it was absolutely necessary. Author notes in there explaining what they've changed, why they changed it. Although they had to make some fantastical, like, yeah, they had to like just think, adjust things around being that, you know, Magneto is a mutant and has magnetic powers. They really did not highlight that in this story. He is a mutant and you do see it in like little snippets, but it's definitely not highlighted. Like they insinuate that he does something, but they don't ever fully show it unapologetically. Like they, this story isn't about a mutant or Magneto having magnetic powers. This is about a young boy growing up and going through trauma. Um, I'm now adding, going to be list, like right now, as we speak, I'm going to be reading Antigone. This is the Thebian plays. And I'm using this for a different format because this is a play script and I don't read as many play scripts as I wish I did. So I performed Antigone like freaking five, four years ago, five or four years ago. But um, yeah, I performed this in my like year 11 theater class. So it's like a little blast from the past, you know? Oh my God, this is just bringing me fucking flashbacks. <laughs> Wonders of many on earth and the greatest of these is man. So when I did the play, we separated the chorus's lines between five of us and I was like in the center. I don't even remember what particular lines I had, but like so far everything has kind of like got that rhythm that I remember performing. Like I don't remember all of the lines distinctly, but I remember kind of like the flow of things. Do you get what I mean? Every performance, every play has kind of like a beat or a rhythm that it flows to. Immortal works her will upon us all. Dun, dun, dun. So that's that. I finished that. It just, the more I kept reading, the more I remembered things. Oh, I just makes me feel very happy. <laughs> I am now going to sit on my phone and, and I'm gonna listen to The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I've had that on my audiobook list for so long. So I think I'll listen to this for the non-human. A love letter to New York City that spans the multiverse. Yeah, like I get it. It's like a love story to the city, but is it five New Yorkers must come together in order to defend the city? Every city has a soul. Okay. A pause. Hello. Oh my god, this lighting. Anyway. Yeah, sorry for this lighting. <laughs> it's kind of the only option I have right now. I wanted to come on here and say that it's the last day of the Strangerthon. So I read like six books all up, the prompts. So I'll insert here. These are the books that I read. Wow. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I read them. And those are the prompts that they're going for. I didn't end up reading a 2021 release or a book that was recommended by any of the um, hosts, but I did majority of the Tic Tac Toe situation. Like I definitely won twice in Tic Tac Toe, three times, but yeah, I missed two of the prompts so I didn't get to tick all of, like, all of the boxes. The last book that I read that I finished today 
this morning was the city we became. Um, I really liked the atmospheric feel. I felt like I really got to know what it was like to be in New York and be in the different sections of New York. Um, I, it, this book is like obviously inspired by H.P. Lovecraft and as someone who hasn't read any of his work I feel like I didn't need to. Like they made it very clear that they were alluding to his stuff but they didn't like make it so like you had to read anything HP in order to understand. So I'm glad because I do want to read um, Lovecraft myself but I feel like this is good on its own as well as with that context as well. It just didn't need anything extra. It was good on its own. It doesn't feel like filler or that it was just setting up for another book. It definitely felt kind of complete to me in a good way. The atmosphere just I can't stress it enough, the feelings of each like area of the city, just oh, beautiful. Each character had their own character development alongside the city development. I think they did a really good job establishing that there are different communities all around New York. And I was like, that's just really cool. I'm gonna scratch off Antigone from here. Yeah. All right.